I was watching Ajwasa, one of her videos, and she mentioned something and it has spoken to me very much. She was saying that after the fight, if you're a married person, after the fight, your relationship should continue. You see, in, in any union relationship for that matter, where two people from different backgrounds are come together to join, to join forces to form anything at all, there's bound to be times eh, where you you fight the reflection of ideologies, friction of philosophy, even friction of normal life um, um, issues, affairs, money, child rearing, literally everything. You will fight. I don't know of any relationship where there's there's not been any recorded fight. That is not a relationship. That's just you're faking your life. But in any relationship like marriage, that goes a long time. There, there's bound to be a time or times where the two of you fight and after the fight you should know that the fight should not destroy your relationship after the fight the relationship should continue now this is where i agree totally 100 percent with i guess you see because your relationship should continue after the fight you should be very careful of the words the choice of the words you use when you're fighting when you have a disagreement or misunderstanding words are spirit and life and they have the capacity to build and to break down into the word that you are using for your spouse during the time i'm all to one can make or break your relationship there are lots of marriages which are empty shell marriages uh, by an empty shell i mean that the marriage is is there the, the shell is there but there's no snail in it it's just empty so it's just purposeless the marriage is there but there's no life in it there's no filiality there's no love in there because the people who are supposed to be in love inwardly they've reserved their emotions because of words that have been thrown at each other for so long so for instance you are fighting and you tell your wife so you so i even regret marrying this this thing you have said eh? After the fight, you might say that, oh, let me be for me kind. But remember that the damage that these words can cause can let your spouse coil back, conserve their emotions, and then just comfort themselves. Say that what the next time you speak such words, it will not affect them. And when that happens, what is actually happening is that they, they, are, they are shielding their vulnerability. When they shield their vulnerability, that door of uh, affirmation, that emotional connection begins to die. And for women, it's even deadly because women can hold on to things for so long. Eh? Or they're turned to the memory palace. It's in their frame of reference. And they will judge every other thing you do with them or for them according to the word you use for them. So I'll catch you and say, Rabbi Jimmy, for Or they're too little. On the two for. On the two for two for that. And because you are married to her, you always at some point in your life need her input on any decision you're going to take. And if she's shielding and conserving and, 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 and comforting herself, she'll tell you do whatever you want to do. It's okay, do whatever you want to do. And it might not go well for you or the man. We are about so you know Let me tell you another side we are I make us be careful what you say. A man, he hit a crisis, a financial crisis. He lost his job. When he lost his job, for some time, the woman was, um, was shouldering the burden of the finances in the house. And because of that, you know, she got frustrated. And no, Kasa, oh, Kasa, no, yeah, Papa, and it, to some point where she was even uh, 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 denying him his conjugal marriage rights. No, it was not give me sex. When he had a corner couple, you remember. And he was saying, she was saying those things to the, to the man so much that at some point, the man stopped asking for sex. Just literally stopped asking for sex. After a while, he found a job. When he found a job, things were okay. And the wife came back to her normal, her ex-well position of doting and loving and being careful with her words. And then she realized that now the man was not, the man wouldn't ask for sex. He would not initiate sex. But when she demanded, the man gave, gave her, but he will not. Initiated. And she was worried because she knew that, you know. <laughs> so she, the lady now wanted to see someone. The man held in high esteem. You know, the man respected so much. 
and she told the person that this is what was going on so the that person the man esteemed so highly came to him and asked him like this is what your wife has told me he now came to tell this man that the wife complained to about the past situation the words she had used the, the way she had behaved with him and over the years now that everything is okay he doesn't even feel like because okay he has coiled up he has reserved, conserved herself, himself he's okay now and he's found peace within himself and that's for the woman he's she's his wife but there's no way he's going to initiate in, a, a affection with her because of all the words that she she used he was deeply hurt so i mean that of course there are times when your spouse will tell you stuff eh? you're fighting you're angry you say something from your heart that will pierce their own hearts too that will compensate for all the pain they've caused you but weigh the words against the future and if you think it's going to cause problems filter the words you know they say that when people are angry they speak the truth the 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 word they speak is uncensored it's not filtered they sit as it is because they're angry they don't care about your emotions anymore. They tell you as it is. But you see, anger can also make you exaggerate. Because you're angry, you may exaggerate so that they also feel the impact of the pain you're going through. And that can be very disastrous because when the anger goes down, the anger is gone. But the words, the weight of the words and the effect of the words have not died. So weigh what you're about to say against the continuity of your relationship. Now, Debbie Hono, and Rafael. And women are very good at that. You keep whatever you told us for years and we will fail you. Okay, I said that I am the You know, so <laughs> no matter how angry you are, you can decide which word comes out of your mouth. You can. You should be decorous. Even when we are fighting, you should be very decorous with the words and the, the choice of words we say. Because for men, especially, me and my woman, so I will say, what I've said, I'm married, so I, I would I would say from my experience with living with a man, their ego, their self-esteem, and the words you say can actually break them down to the point where they begin to doubt their strength. So yes, take your time, eh? Take your time when you're talking to your spouse. Be careful what you say because of the impact that words have on people's psyche. Like, hey, it's not easy. You cannot tell your wife or your yeah, abwa. Then in the evening after you fought, you expect this same abwa to come and take off you sexually. It won't, it won't just work. <laughs> yes. They will not come in fully. They will not give the hour. They will withdraw. And that's not very good for you. So choose your words wisely. Sometimes it lingers on for years. Years. And then they later now tell you this thing you told me. That's what I'm acting like. Then they'll be like, ah. But it's like five years ago. Yes. Five years ago. But it's, it's, it's creates a dent. It cut them so so much. I remember a woman, an elderly woman. She was talking to me. She said um, her husband told her something, and she was climbing a stair staircase when her husband said whatever he said at the top of the staircase. She was climbing, and what the the man said, you know, it was like the man had thrown an arrow, or a sword. <laughs> the man had thrown a sword into her heart. It pierced her so much. She missed a step. Where to? <laughs> what? And up to now, she still remembers what the man said. And she has not even told the husband, though. She has not even told the husband. And that hurt, that emotion, informs the way she's dealing with him now. It's not a very good thing. But that's how she's also coping with the pain. It's not a very good thing. So I just just want to advise someone. If you're married or if you're going to marry, be careful the words you use when you're angry. When you're fighting, just choose them. Be careful. Choose them with decorum and a lot of tact. Mean what you're saying to your spouse, but don't be mean about it. So so that's it. Um, if you have anything to say about this, you can drop a comment in the comment section. Thank you for watching. Um Please like, subscribe if you haven't hit the bell notification, can close the subscribe button. Uh, like this, share, and then let's get interactive in the comment section, okay? There's this lady called Jess. Jess. I don't know if it's a lady or a gentleman. She's called Jess in UK. You have been commenting a lot under my videos. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. I like your interactions. It's fun. 
Thank you so much. And I hope you have closure with Morgan too. Okay? You will. You will. Have closure with Morgan. And stay safe. Okay? All right. Thank you all for watching.